Well, hey guys, it's me, Sam. And, uh, well, today we're talking about my dating issues, apparently. Um, I've been approached by a couple of men recently who, uh, apparently think that they are dating me. I don't understand what is wrong with this world. I really don't. When a woman can not hang out with men who she has a good time with and genuinely enjoys hanging out with, but is not physically attracted to. I don't understand why that friendship cannot exist in the mind of the man when they are getting a genuine friendship out of it. We enjoy music together, we enjoy movies together, we enjoy talking about a lot of things, and we enjoy genuinely hanging out with each other without sexual tension or any of that going on. And yet, they allow their crushes to destroy what friendship we have. And we have genuine friendships, which I don't understand. Why allow your little hormonal fantasies to get the better of you? I have friendships with men that I have had crushes on in the past, and I've gotten over them because the friendship to me mattered more. It's just a simple fact. Friendship matters more to me than some simple hormonal little crush. That being said, my dating history is just filled with a smattering of reasons not to trust. The first guy I ever dated was an absolute freaking psycho, and he did horrible, horrible things when he was on cocaine. And he drank a lot. And so I'm not fond of those who do a lot of cocaine and drink a lot and get volatile because of it. It's just a thing, and it's not that I judge people who do cocaine. I don't care, personally. It's a thing. I grew up around it. I don't care if you do it or not. It's whatever. It's just that when cocaine becomes a thing that drives you, and it's a thing that you need, and it's a thing that changes your, not changes your personality, but alters you into a caricaturized version of yourself where you are not your actual self anymore, that's when I have a problem with the person doing the cocaine. You know what I mean? After dating him, and we had a very, very violent breakup, and he stalked me for a couple of years after, I never had a, a normal relationship after him. I dated... And married the first guy after him uh, because my dad kind of implored me to do so. He wanted me married and he wanted me to have children. And so I, in a way to um, rebel against him, I dated someone so far beneath his standard for me that um, it pissed him off and he hated my choice of husbands, but he eventually warmed up to my husband himself until my husband ran off with me in a way, kind of kidnapping me away from my dad. And my dad hated my husband after that in perpetuity. And that's fair. My husband wasn't that great of a guy and he wasn't the right guy for me. And he had a seventh grade education. And when we argued, it was like arguing with a toddler. And so I wasn't happy in that relationship and I wasn't in love, although I kept trying to convince myself that I was. He was a very loyal man and I have to give it to him. I actually paid a hooker to um, try to get him to stray and she uh, reported back to me and told me that he wouldn't. So I paid for, in essence, a report on how faithful my husband was which was extremely disappointing because I wanted a reason to leave him and he wouldn't give it. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of desperate times. And again, I wasn't in love. I found it hard to fall in love because I, I find it hard to make a connection and trust people in that kind of way. And he didn't impress me in any way. And so I didn't connect with him on any level. The next husband I, I married out of spite <laughs> because again, not in love, 
because I don't connect that way. But this guy was uh, a guy I knew from high school. And, uh, and he had done some terrible things to my cousin. And so I wanted to do some terrible things to him. And so I dated him to kind of get back at him. And uh, he fucked his way through my family. While he was doing so, I uh, strayed and found myself a porn star who I actually evidently fell in love with. And I, I didn't realize it was happening during the time that it happened. And I had a child during that time. And I got married to David, the guy that I wasn't in love with at the time. Because I was scared that the man I was in love with was going to use me for a green card. And so I didn't marry him. Which turned out to be the right decision in the long run. Because he turned out to be a liar. And so, again, with trust issues. You would think that in a polyamorous relationship with a porn star whose job gives him the occupational hazard of cheesing and cheating, um, when you're open and honest with everything and you are online with each other 24 hours a day and you see each other doing these things and you are encouraging each other to have these uh, other affairs, you would think that you would be honest with each other about all of your affairs and he was not. And for two years he carried on an affair with someone who wasn't me. And he didn't tell me about this one personal affair, although he had told me about literally all of the other affairs that, that were going on in his life. It was just this one that he was lying to me about. And so I had to end it because if I could not trust him, someone who literally has no reason to lie, how am I supposed to trust anyone else? Right? So on that note, I never actively looked for anyone else to date because I never saw a purpose in it. I never really needed it. I, I, I tried not to give my children uh, uh, an example. Well, not an example. But I tried to give my children a home in which they would never see a relationship like my first relationship where it was all violence. They would never see mommy unhappy with some guy. Uh, they would never see mom miserable. So they never did. But they also never saw mom happy with someone either. And they never saw mom in a relationship. Because I hid that when I had it. Because it was something I wanted to keep sacred. Something I wanted to keep just for me. And I don't regret that because it was sacred. And I don't regret it because... The one child who didn't know about that relationship is devastated because of the loss of it. So I don't date, not actively. And and although I do go out and I get laid now and again, it's not dating. I keep men around about long enough for them to pleasure me, and then I toss them out. I'm strictly catch and release, and I have been for the last 22 years, 22, 23 years. Um, that's even during the relationship with the, the porn star. But, like, even now, I don't date. I haven't found anyone who impresses me in that way. And there are guys who are alpha males who come out and, like, oh, I'm so impressive. I should, you should want to be with me. I'll take care of you. I take care of me just fine. I don't need someone who's going to take care of me. I want, if I want anyone at all, I would want someone who... I don't know. It's like, hey, baby, listen, you've been working for five days straight and you've got this much accomplished. Why don't we take off for a weekend and uh, go do something we both like to do? Let's take off to a music festival. You know what I mean? Like someone who gets me, someone who's on the same wavelength as me, someone who enjoys a lot of the same things as me, someone who could uh, open my horizons to things that I, I, I don't normally like I wouldn't normally look at you know something someone who can impress me with things that I, I don't normally see or wouldn't normally look into and I don't get that and most of the men that come to me aren't that and so no I don't date and a good majority of men do not impress me in that way so when they come up to me and they ask me to go out with them I can unequivocally say no thanks I'm good so when I say I just want to be friends, it means just that. 
let's hang out. Let's have fun. Let's be friends. I don't want to sit there and be like, oh, hey, let's be friends. Let's fuck around. Let's this and that. Because I don't want to leave you on either. I just want to be friends. Because I'm not interested in any of the other shit with about 99% of the people that I meet. And the 1% of the people that I meet that I am interested in, I'll be honest with you, I'm probably too awestruck to sit there and be like, hey, oh my God, you're so awesome. Can we go out? Because I'm probably sitting there going, wow, your work is amazing. Let's, you know, can we talk about this, that, and the other? And I'm probably nerding out on them more than I am hitting on them. (laughs) Because I'm a nerd and I'm a geek and that's what I do. And I'm not going to make excuses for that. So on that note, yeah, my dating life sucks. But I wouldn't change it for the world because I won't settle for just anyone. And I'm not going to lead anyone on either. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Because my dating life has never gotten in the way of my getting laid. (laughs) There is that. I will talk to you guys soon.